I'm back with a good friend of mine who I so honor. Banning Liebscher is with us today from Jesus Culture. And uh, man, he's, he's just an inspiration to so many as I see the Lord raising him up and just really shaking nations. So, Banning, we honor you, man. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, man. It's Come a privilege, on. man. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks and, for having me. Yeah, no, it really is. We really, really are excited and, and, and privileged to have you on the show. Banning, I had the, I think the first time I heard you minister in person was in Orange County mm-hmm. back in 2006. I was actually telling Kim that I kind of snuck in the back of that meeting with a pastor who was friends with Benny Perez, and you guys had yeah. Benny Perez there with you also ministering. Other than that, I hadn't heard you minister again uh, in person since the awakening in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and you, you preached a message, and it's really the message I'm hearing you preach wherever yeah. you go is yeah, yeah. give your all yeah. to Jesus. Sell out yeah. for Jesus. See what he can do with a life that is just totally given away yep. to him. Be, before we actually started running camera, we, we were you and I were speaking about Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Yeah, yeah. I want you to touch on him because he really carried uh, something so special. I believe it's something so yeah. needed for for, yeah. for our generation. Well, you know, you mentioned I preach it everywhere, and it's true because I feel like I feel like there is there are certain foundational things that if you get this, everything else works out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you can get this one thing, and uh, even with Bonhoeffer, you, you know. The, uh, one of the things that we're, we're out with this young generation, youth, and young adults, and, and we're preaching hardcore at them. I, yeah. we're, we're like, listen, following Jesus is the most hardcore thing you'll ever do with your life. Yeah. Because Jesus, um, he required everything you had. Like he was very clear. He'd tell them, he'd say, you know, you have to count the cost of following me. Yeah. You know, and he'd say, you got to count the cost. And then he would give it an illustration of, you know, nobody starts building the tower. Nobody starts building a tower without counting their resources and halfway through, they can't finish it and they're embarrassed. Right. Nobody goes to war without counting their troops unless they go to war and find out, I gotta call peace. He says in the same way, talking about count your costs, he said, if you're not willing to forsake everything, you can't be my disciple. Yeah. I, I, I mean, the, the whole, uh, this is what holiness is. I mean, ultimately holiness is, is set apart, completely set apart. Consecration, sanctification, holiness, all those mean the exact same thing, set apart. Right. The concept of holiness is not what you do and don't do. It's not a list of rules. It's simply that my entire life, everything, yeah. every area of my life is completely given and surrendered. It's completely set apart for him. Yeah. And if you can get that down, everything else will. If you can get that down, that yeah. when, Jesus, when Jesus said, follow me, he meant you have to be willing to forsake everything. Everything. You have to be able to forsake everything. Now, did he mean everything? <laughs> uh, yeah, everything. I mean, all of it. I mean, that's the thing. Like, if you, you know, you, you know, he said, "Let me go back and bury the. Let me go back and bury my father." Right. He's like, "No, like you got to be. You got to be willing to forsake everything right. to follow me." Yeah. That was that was the hardcore part. Just and like you, with Moses, with, with Elijah and Elisha. He said, "Man, can I just get a second? Let yeah. me just go back." And he said, "What do I have to do with you?" Yeah. You know, do you know who God is? Yeah. 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 And, yeah, this is Christian, and this is a Christian life. And, and he's the only one. Say that again, Manny. I mean, this is the Christian life. He is the only one that can require from us everything because he gave us everything. And this is, this is the deal. You know, God is the only one that can require from us everything we have because he looks at us and says, listen, I gave you everything I have in Jesus. Yeah. Like Jesus is not 10% of God. It's, you know, we chuckle all the time about that. People that have, they struggle with tithing. You know, believers sure. are like, oh, like, is it, is it biblical? Is it Old Testament, New Testament? No, I, don't, I don't know if I want to give 10%. And I'm like, listen, you're completely missing the point. Jesus is not asking for 10% of your money. He's asking for all of your money. Yeah. God doesn't want 10% of your money. He wants all of your money. <laughs> he doesn't want 10% of your friends. He doesn't want 10% of your energy. He doesn't want 10% of your resources. He doesn't want 10% of anything. He wants 100%. He wants everything. Yeah. And... And so, you know, when we struggle with giving 10%, you know, I, I kind of, I laugh because I'm like, he don't want 10%. He wants all of your money. Right. And he's the only one that can require that because he gave Jesus. And right. Jesus isn't 10% of who, he didn't look around and say, what can I, what can I give? I'm going to give Jesus. He represents 40% of me. Right. I mean, Jesus represented everything he had. Yeah. The fullness of the deity. The fu- he, fullness he gave to us. And he says, but I want everything you have. So... I'm so glad you're preaching this, bro, because obviously the supernatural, we welcome it, yeah, yeah, we yeah. want it, we need it. Uh, 
one of my desires is to see an openness for the supernatural, uh, especially in America, that even in his largest churches, yeah, yeah. I want the, the, the miracle working power of the Lord to be released. But I think sometimes um, in the midst of preaching, uh, well, God is good, and he is. He's good and he heals this. He does. I mean, we, we cling to it. But I kind of feel like he's so good that he's worth everything. Yeah, absolutely. He, he, he's so good that he can demand it all. Yeah. He wants it. Yeah. Yeah, because of Jesus, yeah. because of what he gave. So Banning, uh, Bonhoeffer said, when God calls a man, he, call, he bids him to come and die. Yeah. What's that mean to you? Well, <laughs> it means he just requires everything. Like we find our life in him. And he just requires everything. I mean, it's a, I feel like we've made things too complex sometimes. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's that it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. It's my entire life is his. All of it is completely his. And uh, it's, it's for his glory. And what's interesting is, is Bonhoeffer would talk about the cost of discipleship. And, and, and it's a message we don't speak a ton on, the, the cost. And... So, you know, and some of it's because what you get in return, it's silly to talk about the cost sometimes. You know what I'm saying? You're yeah. like, we get Jesus in return. Like, right. you know, like, like anybody who's died, anybody who's given everything to Jesus, you rarely ever hear them talk about the cost because you're like, you know what? <laughs> right. What we get, I mean, we get Jesus, like, you know, what we get in return, you, you know, I got a diamond. I'm not, I don't talk about this dirt clod. Yeah. Right. They're not even, they're not, they're not even a comparison of what we gave up to what we, mm. retu- what we get. But the reality is, is there is a cost. The reality is, is it costs your life. You have to be willing to lay everything down. It has to be all about him. It's, it's, you know, and there is a cost involved in following Jesus. And this is one thing we talk about. If you really study the Gospels, hmm. Jesus was constantly making it hard to stay yeah. and easy to leave right. all the time. I mean, he gathered crowds of 15,000 and he'd whittle them down to 12. Mm-hmm. And they wanted to leave too, but they just were like, you, you know, I, you know, there'd be 15,000 people that he'd gather and he'd get up and say something like, you know, if you want to have any part of me, you have to drink my blood and eat my flesh, which you know is an yeah. extremely offensive statement to sure. a Jewish culture. And, and they'd all be like, that is just so out there. And they'd all leave. And he didn't qualify it. He didn't qualify it at all. He didn't say, uh, you know, this is an allegory. This is symbolic. I'm talking about, you know, grape juice and saltine crackers. He's, yeah. He just would say it. And there'd be 12 that would be left. And he'd say, you guys going to go too? Yeah. Like, we, you know, we want to, but you're the only one that found the words life. But that's dying. It's like I have to be able to die to, you know, offenses. And, like, it's, it's hardcore following Jesus. Yeah. Doesn't always make sense. It's confusing sometimes. But he requires our entire life. And, and that is one thing that we have to, there is no getting around that. He requires our entire life. And, and that's good, normal Christianity, right? Normal Christianity, your entire life. And that's the good, the bad, the ugly, your weaknesses, your strengths, all of it. Mm-hmm. And he says, come as you are. You know, he'll say, come as you are. Right. But he wants all, all that you have. He requires everything. Do you, do you feel like that is a message that America needs? Oh, yeah. And if so, why? Because I, I got to be honest. And again, I, I, one, something we really stand on is honoring what God has given everyone. But I'm not hearing much of that preached. Uh, you know, I think there's a reaction at some level to... Uh, um, uh, I think there's a, some reaction to a holiness message that was probably more based in um, what you shouldn't be doing, um, that you've never, you don't really measure up, um, that it's about if you don't do this, 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 and this, you're mm-hmm. holy. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that there's probably at some level, you know, the grace of God is, is, is incredible. The love of Jesus, it's, it's his kindness that leads us to repentance. And so I think that there probably is some resistance to a holiness message that I feel was, you know, good heart, good intention, but was just off a little bit. Uh, uh, holiness for me, uh, uh, holiness for me is not a bunch of no's. It's just not. Holiness is one huge yes. Yeah. So when I got married. That's so good, man. When I got married, I said yes. A, I said such a complete yes to my wife that I don't have to say no to other things. 
Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't walk into a room and to every girl, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. And I don't have to because I, I said such a full yes to my wife. Yeah. Well, that's, that's holiness. It's that I said such a full yes to Jesus that every other question has been answered from here on out. Yeah. Every other situation or question I'll ever face goes through the filter of I said yes to him. And, and we've got to raise up a generation. I'm not asking them to say no to drugs and no to that and no to sex and no to that. I'm just saying say yes to Jesus, but a full yes. Yeah. You can't say partly yes. It's a full yes that's required from you. Yeah. And, um, and, and when that full yes happens, like again, we don't, we don't walk around, no, 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 no. And there's temptation and there's things you struggle with and all that. But even the answer to that is to get with Jesus more. I mean, this, this is, in order to fully say yes to him, which is what he requires, mm-hmm. it, it means that I've encountered his yes for me. This is why, G, this is why the, even your ministry and what you're doing with, with really representing and introducing people to Jesus it becomes so critical because if we're gonna raise up a generation that say yes to Jesus fully, yeah. it means they've encountered his yes to them. And it's, it's, you know, first John, we loved him because he first loved us. Mm-hmm. So my ability to fully love him comes from my encounter with his loving me. I love him because he loved me. Right. And it's the revelation of his love for me that means, that, that awakens love for him. What that means is anytime I'm struggling and having to say no, it's only because I've distanced myself yeah. from encountering his love for me. And every time I'm in his presence, every time I encounter fresh his love, everything in me is like, God, I wanna give you everything. I, I wanna give you all of my love. And mm-hmm. that stuff just a little bit ago that I'm like struggling and giving up and don't wanna do, like everything, when I'm with you, I, because his love awakens my love. Yes. And it's, and it's, I can't say yes to him. It's, it's his full yes to me that awakens my full yes for him, right? right. So I, we tell people all the time, if you're struggling with a full yes to Jesus, it's simply because you need to, get, you need to go encounter his full yes for you. Yeah. It's one reason why we're so passionate about people reading the Bible. Come on, go there. I'm like the whole, the Bible is one big love story to you. The Bible is one big radical message yeah, of right. the love the Father has for you and everything he gave to you in Jesus. And I'm trying to get a whole generation to say yes to Jesus fully. They got to go encounter him. Yeah. One of the main ways encounter him is in the word. That's right, man. It's the secret to freedom. Actually encountering yeah. God in the word, understanding the word, you'll encounter in there the fullness of God saying yes to you. And you just think, I want to give him everything. I want to give him everything. Yeah. I want to give everything to him. Right. I want to give him my entire life. Nothing held back from Jesus. Yeah, one taste of him. One taste. And that's why I think that in John 15 when he says... He says, as the Father has loved me, so I've loved you. Abide in my love. He doesn't tell us to abide in our love for him. He says, the key is this. <laughs> the revelation that blows all of our mind. Jesus says, the same way that God the Father loves God the Son. Yeah. The same love he has for me. That's the same exact way I love you. Yeah, man. Now your job is to abide in that love I have for That's you. It. Because if you can abide in that love, You'll give him every, you, will, you will give him everything. That's Your amazing. yes every day will be so full if you just learn to abide in his love. And that book is one huge love letter. That's so powerful. You know, I was waiting on the Lord uh, at our house, this is about two years ago, and this is what I heard the Holy Spirit say. To defeat your sin, love your God. That's it. And I thought, oh wow, that's so true. When I was younger and I had my struggles and I was backslidden and I was still you know, playing golf, traveling and everything that comes with that life. And then I, I came back to the Lord and, and there were things that the Lord had to work out in me. When my attention was focused on resisting alone, I never won. Yeah. And when Jesus became my focus, freedom came right yeah. away. Yep. That's why Moses said, look, and live, or again, scripture says, they looked unto him and yeah. their faces were radiant. Yeah. They looked yeah. at the glory of the Lord, which yeah. is Jesus. Yeah. And they began to shine. You know, I, I, and I'm sure you on a much larger scale deal with so many people who are bound and an encounter with the love of God yeah. is the remedy. I've, I've always said, man, 
I was thinking, man, what would I want to be known for or whatever? You know, we think these thoughts and probably make God laugh. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I thought, well, I guess it'd be wonderful to be known as somebody who loved Jesus. Yeah. But I, I, I feel like even in that, there's possibility for pride. That, that I'm known as somebody who loves Jesus. Yeah. But to be known as someone who he loved. Yeah. Somebody who's loved. Yeah. Somebody who's loved by him to me. That's, yeah. that's the peak. Yeah. And, and so when John wrote that, John the Beloved, the one whom Jesus loved, he couldn't even take credit. Yeah. But he was convinced yeah. of it. Well, we also realize my, my ability to love him is only because he loves me. The yes of my spirit is only because I've encountered his yes. Yeah. It's one of the reasons why I think there's such a war against the, the, the um, I think there's such a war against the father, seeing God as a father, and, and, and that gets so skewed because when you're dealing with sin, mm -hmm. when you don't have the right perspective of God, you wanna run. Sin causes us to run and hide. Sin causes us to wanna go in shame. But when we encounter a loving father, mm -hmm. we realize, you know, I mean, that's the whole thing. Shame and guilt and all that makes you run when you should be going to him. Yeah, so true. If you're dealing with sin, the solution is going to him. Yeah. And so the enemy gets all of that skewed and all yeah. of that wrong perception of God and, 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 and even all the, you know, yeah. uh, there's such a wrong perception of God that you know he's angry or he's he's disappointed or he's you know gonna judge you or all this type of stuff which makes us kind of hide from him mm -hmm. when what you what you just said the solution is is to go run to him yeah freedom from that sin is found running to him right uh, because the proper picture of god is jesus yeah. right he's the perfect revelation of the lord Catherine kuhlman used to say this she used to say i love him too much to hurt him because you know, people asked yeah uh, her What's the secret for a victorious Christian life? How can I be free? And that was her answer. I love him too much to hurt him. Yeah. I don't want to hurt him. Yeah. You know, and, uh, my, my brother, Theo, actually said, religion says do this and don't yeah. do that. He said, love says I just don't want to hurt you. Yeah. It's just yeah. much different. You talked about counting your cost, counting the cost. How does somebody count the cost? What, what does that even sound like? How does that practically play out? You come to an altar or whatever, somebody preaches the gospel. What did Jesus mean by counting the cost? What can that practically sound like today? Well, you know, I think that, um, I think obedience is a big one. You know, you have to say, I, I'm, go I'm going to be obedient to what he says. You know, I deal a lot with youth and young adults. Yeah. So in the youth and young adult realm, I mean, you're getting practical with them. Like, listen, God will require everything you have, which means your reputation, mm. <laughs> your friends, your music, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I, I don't even, I don't preach against music. I don't preach, I don't, we don't even preach against all that because I'm like, listen, just get with Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trust me, you encounter Jesus and do what he tells you to do. Right. And so a lot of it's that, like, like for me, I mean, this again, this is youth, uh, practical stuff, but you know, I lost all my friends, all of them gone. When I said yes to Jesus, I lost all of my friends. Mm -hmm. It's part of the cost. And it was like, you know, if that's the cost, you know, I'm bored at home on Friday night. Yeah. And, and just, just the practical side of all of that, mm -hmm. you know, it, it does get really practical. Yeah. But again, we don't really, I don't even really talk about that much because you're like, oh my gosh, what I gained? But there is that initial like, you know, your reputation, all that stuff, none of that matters. Yeah. None of it matters. Even if it means, uh, I mean, Jesus made it clear even regarding family. Yeah. Right? You have to love him more than family. Yeah. That was, diff that was a tough one for me. Yeah, yeah. I remember thinking uh, when I really felt the call of the Lord, it, even beyond salvation, I felt Him calling me into ministry. I said, "Man, those were real strongholds for me." You know, I don't, I, and I value family, but it was a love issue. It wasn't like He said, "You don't want you spending time with them." He He just yeah. wanted my heart, and, and 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 family is in the heart of God. Once I said yes to Him, a greater love for my family came. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we had, you know, the Lord spoke to me early on. He just said, I'm going to require things out of you I don't require out of other people. And, and some of that's the cost sometimes. Why is that? Uh, you know, I don't know, really. He just, you know, I, I think at some level where he wanted to take me or different things, he just said, hey, you can't just look at other people and say, well, they get to do that. And he said, I'm going to require things out of you I don't require out of other people. Yeah. I Are you going to follow me, you know? Yeah, I used to watch people make decisions so easily. They seemed so free. And then I'd go to make the smallest decision 
and the, I, and the Lord would check me. And I was thinking, this is like, this is not a big deal, Lord. And I used to, rem I remember thinking, they get to make these decisions so easily. And the Lord would quickly just kind of check me. Yeah. That's them, this is you. Yeah. That's the cost. The cost is I'm willing to forsake everything yep. for you. And that means I'm willing, like I said, we're willing to, res what people think about me, I, I, I'm willing to forsake everything. Yeah. That, that was the cost, you know? When he said you gotta count the cost, it's you gotta be willing to forsake everything. And, and, and it's not even that everybody will lose all their friends. It's mm -hmm. not even that everybody, uh, that's not even it. But you have to be willing. Right. <laughs> Just say, I'm willing, to, I'm willing to lose everything for yeah. you. Yeah. Benning, how does this giving all play out in this generation? And what do you see when you, when you, when, when you put your head down at night, you're waiting on the Lord, what are you longing to see in this generation? Uh, you know, I, I, I really am longing to see a generation that have so fully encountered the love of Jesus that they'll give everything to him for his glory and that their lives have been marked in that way. Mm -hmm. Where they make a decision right now that will mark their life, they'll be 85, 90 years old, still marked from a decision they made that said, I'll give you everything because they've encountered his love. Mm -hmm not because they feel guilty, not because they were just motivated for a moment, but because they've so fully encountered his love for them. They said, God, I, I, I want, here's my entire life, use it for your glory. And um, you know, it's interesting because there's a story of the five loaves and two fish. And what I really feel like the message were to call youth and young adults to, really anybody, we'll, we'll talk to anybody, but is um, when Jesus came, Again, the cost is your entire life. Mm -hmm. When it really boils down, boils down to it, the cost is your entire yeah. life. And when he came and he said, I want to I wanna feed the multitudes, what do we have? Mm -hmm. And a young boy comes with five loaves and two fish. We all know the story really well. And, and Jesus, he, he multiplies the food, an incredible miracle. Mm -hmm. But it would have, Jesus could have multiply, multiplied one fish and one loaf of bread. It wouldn't have been, we wouldn't have been any more blown away by the miracle if he would have just done it with one and one. <laughs> but he didn't. When the young boy came, he didn't have much. He had five loaves and two small fish, the Bible actually says. It wasn't a lot, but it was enough if, if all of it was given. Right, so Jesus didn't look at him and say, all right, give me one loaf and one fish. That's all I really need to multiply anyways. Mm -hmm. He took everything the boy had. Mm -hmm. That's it right there. Yeah. It's like an entire generation that comes and says, Jesus, I don't have much. I'm not sure how you can use my life to impact the multitudes, but all I have yeah. is five loaves and two fish, and it's all yours. And they're not coming saying, all right, well, I was, man, that was a great conference. All right, well, here's a fish and here's a loaf. And I'll kind of hold on to four, four loaves of bread and one fish. Yeah. Jesus comes and says, listen, you don't have much, but it's enough if you'll give all of it to me. Yeah. And that's what I dream about, I, 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 giving everything. And then the Lord has an amazing way of coming and dialing in on the very thing that we don't want to, you know? I mean, this is the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler was not about money. <laughs> it was about the one thing he was unwilling to give up. Yeah. And Jesus came to him and said, listen, if you want to be, if you want to be my disciple, take all your possessions, sell them, give them to the poor. He wasn't, he wasn't from then on out telling every Christian to sell all, their, all the possessions. He was going after the one thing right. that the rich young ruler was coming and saying, I'll give you three loaves and one fish and I'm gonna hold on to this. And Jesus said, if you wanna follow me, you gotta do this. Yeah. Which was that last final piece of, here's everything. Yeah. That's what I dream about, man. Marked in power too, you know, marked in power, marked sure. in the supernatural. But, but if we can get him there, in such a full way. In such a full way. In such a full way, where the rest of their life they're marked by that. Um, that that's, that's when I think we can do something. That's when peer pressure becomes powerless. That's when you can't buy them. You can't buy somebody, man. You can't buy somebody that gave everything. Yeah, because they've tasted. You can't offend somebody that's died. You can't. It, it's also where I think evangelism is going to come out of. I think evangelism is going to come out of, I've so encountered his love for me. I just... I, you know, I just want other people to encounter that, you know? Yeah. I, you know, just, I, I've been feasting. Yeah. And I want you to encounter the same feast. So that's what I dream about. I dream about an entire generation giving their five loaves and two fish. Because what I know is this, if they'll do that, he'll use their life to impact multitudes. Yeah, and, and I can't help but think of the joy 
in his heart when someone gives all. Yeah. I can almost see his face when he had the fish and the bread. Yeah. Something had to well up within him right before he looked to his father and blessed it. Yeah. Benning, man, look, look at the people and just minister what's on your heart. You know, call, call, yeah. the, call the generation to the Lord. Yeah. Listen, I, I really do want to, uh, I just want to encourage you with this. I want to challenge you and encourage you. Um, I believe God will use your life to impact the multitudes. Yeah. I believe he'll use your life to transform a city, to change an area of society, to impact nations, to see thousands and thousands brought into the kingdom. Um, but what it requires is everything you have. Uh, you know, and, and the boy, uh, I'd like to believe that at the, you know, at the end of the story, it talks about he had baskets left over. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I think that Jesus gave that to the boy yeah. for his family, you know. There's such a massive sacrifice, such a massive cost when you really give everything to him. But what you get in return is, is so worth it. But, but the Lord will use your life in a, in a major way to, 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 to impact the multitudes. But the key is abiding in his love. The key is abiding his love. If you're struggling at all with giving anything, if there's some area of your life that's not fully surrendered to him, I'm talking about every area of your life completely surrendered, good, bad, and ugly, your weaknesses, everything else, everything is surrendered to him. If you're struggling at all with surrendering everything, it's only because you have distanced yourself from the revelation that he surrendered everything for you. To receive daily teaching from Michael Koulianos and to follow his ministry schedule around the world, please follow us on Facebook and Twitter. By partnering with Jesus Image, you will help us take the life-saving gospel around the world through international miracle services, conferences, and television. Your giving will change lives for eternity. For more information, call 407-878 7421 or write us at Jesus Image, P.O. Box 950640, Lake Mary, Florida 32795. Again, thank you for your prayers and financial support. God bless you. The proceeding was paid for by the friends and partners of Jesus Image.